We need to look out for our brothers and sisters. I'm sick and tired of hearing people put somebody else down. We don't need to hear that. There's no room for that. As, uh, 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 I've spoken in several different places recently to large groups of people responsible for the Pentecostal church in Australia. I said, what we need is for every church to stand up for one another. He said, well, we're all the body of Christ. We ought not to pick on one another. We ought not to put one another down. We're all the body of Christ. Now, we may be different in some ways, and that's okay, but we should be building one another up and encouraging one another so that the kingdom of God can advance in its various ways throughout the nation. Do do you know, inside the church, we need to be building one another up. The kingdom of God advances when we speak words that are positive to one another. Psalm 133 speaks about unity. It speaks about us uh, experiencing the blessing of God as a result of the unity that we exhibit. You know, there's no problem with unity. People say, I want to work towards unity. I say, you don't, thank you. You don't need to work towards unity. People say, well, why? I say, Jesus Christ united us at the cross. He united us through his resurrection. The only problem is this, people who destroy unity by their actions. Right? I'm united with you here today. There is no issue. There's nothing I need to work towards. I am already one in Christ with you. The only thing that will cause a problem is the words or actions that divide us. And they're sinful. And what we need to do is stop them and, we need to, and, and allow the unity that Christ has already purchased for us to have its way amongst us. When there is unity, God commands blessing. And he wants to bless the church. Hallelujah. And so we find here that the, uh, Nehemiah is standing. And then what happens is it says, but there was a man who sounded the trumpet who stayed with me. There are going to be times where we need to work with and for one another, but there are times where we all need to come together and work at, as one. All right? So there are times where, where, where we should be all called together as one to speak on behalf of the to, to, to speak on behalf of the church, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And sometimes there'll be a trumpet sound. There'll be a a, 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 a blowing of a trumpet that will bring about a call to prayer or a call to work or a call to evangelize. And when that trumpet sound, when it sounds, we need to respond as one so that God can bring the blessing that he desires to bring. You know, from what I understand, you've had a wonderful week of celebrations this week, and I want to commend you all for doing that because what makes it work is people coming together as one. Imagine all of the work and the effort if nobody turned up. It wouldn't be very exciting, would it? It would be like having a birthday party and nobody turning up to your birthday party. It would be disappointing. It would be painful. And the celebration that ought to have been a celebration wouldn't be a celebration. It wouldn't be a blessing. It would actually be a curse. And so there are going to be times where, as with Nehemiah and the man with the trumpet... Where, where there's a call to come together, where there's a call to unite with one another in one place, in one location. Sometimes it'll be to pray. Other times it'll be to celebrate. Other times it'll be to commiserate. But whatever it is, sometimes it'll be for some other reason. But when there's a call to come, we need to unite together so God can command blessing on the thing that we rally together for. It says, um, verse 19, it says, Then I said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, The work is extensive and spread out. We are widely separated from each other along the wall. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. When the trumpet is sounded, all you need to do is turn up. God fights on your behalf. You know, the Christian Apostolic Fellowship in this nation is spread out. It's, it's, it's across many different, was it 17 or 18 provinces? 
Uh, is, is to spread out. It takes a long time to get from one province to another in some circumstances. It's spread out. But when there's a call to gather, when there's a call to celebrate, when there's a call to pray, as we gather, it's not our gathering that makes the difference. It's God who fights for us that makes the difference. All we need to do is to turn up. All we need to do is get into the ring and then God does what only God can do. And we've, you, you know, as you read the Old Testament, you see many times where uh, God works signs and wonders and miracles. As armies gathered together, God routed the enemy before even the soldiers were able to fight. It's extraordinary. It says this, verse 21, so we continue the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon even when he went for water. I think, sadly, what happens is the popularity of the Word of God ebbs and flows, goes up and down in our own lives. There are times where we read it consistently, and then there are times where we stop reading for a while. What Nehemiah is saying here is, we never took our clothes off. We were never unprepared for whatever might take place. And if there's a message tonight that we need to hear, it's the same message that Nehemiah was giving the people back there. We must never be unprepared. And what I say, but what I mean by that is we should never go without the Word of God. Now, I'm not suggesting that everywhere you go, you carry a Bible. But what I am saying is that everywhere you go, the Bible is in your heart. And we, we need to read our Bibles regularly. And some of you will say, but I just don't understand it well enough. Keep reading. Eventually, you will. If you understand this to be uh, <clears throat> most important to you in, in, in winning the battle, then you'll carry it with you. You know, if you're walking in some dark street where, where, where you're concerned for your safety, if you're able to carry something to protect you, you would. When you're in fear, you carry something to protect you, don't you? You know, if tonight there was something coming in here that was going to hurt you and you, you needed a weapon, then you would make sure you had a weapon or you would stay away from it. But our problem is this, as Christians, too often we, we begin to get a little slack with regard to the fight that we're in. And when we get slack with regard to the fight we're in, the enemy gets free shots at us. He gets to hit us and he gets to hit us hard. And too often what we do is rather than realizing the enemy's attacking us, we just think we're having a bad day. Or we think we're having a bad week. We think things aren't going right or God's not protecting us. Too often the reason the enemy's been able to attack us is because we've let what's most important become less important than it should be. The Bible is that which protects you. The Bible is your sword against the enemy. And you know, it, it does you good to read it. It does you good to ponder and meditate. It does you good to memorize it. Because as you do, you have a weapon with you all the time so that when the enemy attacks, you see, he doesn't knock on your door and say, I'm coming to attack. He attacks you at a time that you're not ready for it. But if you've got your word with you, then it's going to make a significant difference. Tonight, I want to challenge you. You're in a battle. You're in a fight. You're going to be opposed. You're going to be criticized. People are going to call you names. There are going to be those that are, are on the periphery, on the edge of your gathering. And that, the enemy is going to try and attack them. Your responsibility is to get into the, into the boxing ring and to fight. It's to protect yourself, it's to protect your family, it's to protect your friends, it's to protect the kingdom of God, it's to protect the family of God. And what we need to do is we need to squash gossip, we need to squash fear, and we need to stand up strong in the name of Jesus Christ. And we need to look at this city, we need to look at this nation and say there is nothing too great for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When he calls us together, he fights the battle. When he calls us together, the battle is won because he's there. He commands blessing and he, and, and he gives us victory. 
tonight. I don't know where you're at or what's going on in your life, but I do know this. You're in the same battle that I'm in. It doesn't matter where you come. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what experiences you've had. We are never going to cease being in a battle until the day we, we are reconciled completely with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And on that day, we'll die. We'll be with him. But in the meantime, we've got a city to win. We've got a nation to win. We've got nations to win. There's a message of hope, a message of grace, a a, a message of eternal life for all mankind that we need to proclaim to all of those around about us. But if we're only worried about ourselves, if we're, when the question is asked, what is it that you want? If we're only going to answer with the things that matter most to us rather than the things that matter to God, then the battle the battle begins to go the way of the enemy. I know many of you tonight are here and you might be doing well, but you've got family and friends that are not doing well. They need your prayers, but they need your protection. You have what it takes. I remember one time someone said to me, I just can't do this anymore. I said, yes, you can. They were wanting me to give them sympathy. I said, yes, you can. It was a marriage problem, husband and wife. And the husband said, I just can't do this anymore. I said, yes, you can. He said, no, you don't understand. No, I said, I'm telling you, you can. Don't tell me you can't. God has given you what you need to overcome in this battle. If you give in to fear, if you give in to your weakness, then you'll lose the battle. You have got what it takes. You're just going to have to try harder. You're going to have to push in a little more. And can I say this to you today? You have what it takes to win this nation to Jesus Christ. The battle is not too large. The battle is not too large. And the great thing is, it's not just you who are doing it. There are churches right across this country that are pushing in, that are preaching the gospel, that are giving a message of hope, that are trying to save those who are oppressed by the enemy. There's a wall to be built, and we are building the wall. The kingdom of God is advancing, and we're going to see his name glorified, his name lifted up, his name exalted. But tonight, it might not be like that for you. Some of you are saying, I'm going to fight like I've never fought before, and that's great. There are some of you here tonight who are saying, you know what, I want to fight, but I don't feel like I can. And I'm going to ask you to stand together with me now, and if someone could come and play the keyboards, if you'd all stand. Too many people think the answer lies in the pastor. It's not the New Testament. The answer lies in the community. It's not the pastor that has all the answers. It's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords that has the answers. And he directs the community to answer the problems.